When the global pandemic first hit in the beginning of 2020, indoor air quality, or IAQ, became the elephant in the room for people that were responsible for HVAC equipment. This includes everyone from CEOs to facility managers and property owners. Measures were taken for businesses to regularly sterilize horizontal surfaces, enforce mask wearing, and increase social distancing. Individuals were doing their part, but it became clear that the infrastructure of buildings needed to adopt new practices as well. This brought some questions to the forefront of businesses looking to reopen or optimize their indoor spaces like, what long-term solutions can be implemented to prevent another pandemic from happening again? And more precisely, how can we prevent the spread of germs and disease? For the individuals responsible for managing HVAC systems, the pandemic has marked a shift in attitude towards indoor air quality from being a nice to have to being a need to have. The good news is that the basics of good IAQ have not changed within the context of HVAC. There are four essential things that every commercial facility needs to be concerned with when it comes to quality of their air. Ventilation systems, filtration systems, HVAC system inspections, and temperature control. First, let's take a look at ventilation systems. The role of ventilation is to add the proper amount of fresh air from outside of your space to the air inside of your space and remove an equal amount of the old air. The role is so vital that ASHRAE, the American Society of Heating, Refrigerating and Air Conditioning Engineers, claims it is one of the most important jobs of an HVAC system. It is the difference between fresh air and stagnant, uncomfortable air. And at its worst, subpar ventilation can trap indoor air containing toxins and contaminants that can make people sick. Put simply, the way to prevent this from happening is to increase both the amount of mechanical and natural ventilation within the building. To start, you need to at least meet the building code minimum outdoor air ventilation rates and ensure that building exhaust systems are exchanging the proper amount of air. You will want to find a test and balance professional that can help you measure your systems to see where your air ventilation rates are at so that you can adjust accordingly. Testing, adjusting, and balancing is not within the skill set of most HVAC service technicians, so make sure you get the proper help that you need. For typical commercial buildings, ASHRAE recommends four to six air changes per hour of ventilation to eliminate airborne viral pathogens. If doing this causes an increase in energy consumption, it can be offset through other strategies, like the use of energy recovery ventilators, or ERV, and improving building envelope performance. Now, let's discuss what you can do to your filtration systems to improve your air quality. Kind of like the lungs of an HVAC system, filters ensure that air circulating through a building is refined for human consumption. They trap particulates and contaminants that can affect our well-being. Therefore, it is important to make sure that filters are replaced at the appropriate times and not getting overloaded between changes. According to ASHRAE, a filter rating of MERV 13 is recommended for most building systems. If this isn't doable, then at the very least, have a minimum of MERV 11 filters. As you can see here, MERV 13 rated filters are the difference between trapping bacteria and virus carriers. The higher the MERV rating, the more effective the filter is at capturing certain types of particles. The third essential for good IAQ are HVAC system inspections. Much like you would take your car to a mechanic for an inspection or go to the doctor for a yearly physical, your HVAC system needs to be thoroughly reviewed and assessed by experienced HVAC professionals to confirm that all system components function properly. This includes everything from temperature and thermostat checks to inspections of cooling systems, electrical connections, refrigerant levels, safety measures, coils, pressure, and more. Filters are not the only thing that needs to be maintained in your system, so make sure to check your HVAC service agreement to ensure that comprehensive and thorough system inspections are indeed happening. Additionally, make sure that at least one performance level inspection is included in your agreement. This will provide insight into the efficiency of your system and documentation for future maintenance or upgrades. 
Lastly, let's talk about temperature control. We've all been in a building that was kept too cold for no good reason, or a building where the heat wasn't working during a cold spell in the winter. It's pretty distracting, isn't it? Both cold and hot temperatures can negatively impact productivity, concentration, and work performance. Additionally, thermal discomfort negatively impacts the efficiency of the human immune system and exacerbates the impacts of illness. So, it's important to take temperature and resulting thermal discomfort into account. Most temperature ranges found within buildings won't significantly impact the viability of pathogens themselves, but will affect how humans respond to them. To better manage temperature in your facility, you will want to implement a good thermostat system or invest in a building automation system. These systems can vary in complexity depending on the needs of the building and keep a building's climate within a specified range optimized for its respective tenants. While getting started with indoor air quality, the topic might seem vast and possibly even intimidating. But this shouldn't be a reason for stopping you from deploying the best practices we covered in this video. The most important thing is to understand your buildings, understand the respective HVAC systems, and how the spaces are utilized. Good IAQ doesn't have to be costly and doesn't have to involve incorporating practices beyond the capabilities of the building professions and trades. Taking the time to better the quality of air in your buildings will lead to more productive and happier occupants, as well as a better ROI from those occupants. Additionally, it prevents costly mechanical system repairs, legal costs, and bad publicity. We hope this video helped you understand how to get started to optimize your HVAC system for IAQ. If you are an owner or manager of a commercial facility and are looking to improve your indoor air quality, then please visit www.colonialweb.com to find out how we can help. We offer a wide range of HVAC services that will modernize your building's approach and create a healthy work environment for the individuals inside.